Go. Good morning, Keller Williams Dunwoody. It is Tuesday, April 16th, sales meeting. Good to have you back. Good to see you. Um, hope everyone had a great Passover, great Easter. Uh, obviously a different type one than we're used to. Uh, I don't know of anyone that actually attended a service, which is highly unusual for those two holidays, but um, most of us made do and found workarounds. I actually watched uh, Andy Stanley on his uh, talk just like this. And if you haven't seen that, go back and watch. It's, it's quite amazing, the talk. It kind of uh, attaches to what's happening right now in our world and uh, attaches it to the story of Easter. So um, if you get a chance, it's easy to pull that up. Just go to either North Point or Buckhead Church and uh, get on the Easter service. Um, for depending on when you became aware of this, you're either in your second, third, fourth or fifth week of this. Um, and we have different reactions and different uh, feelings about what's going on right now. Um, first week that we talked about this, I basically said things were changing by the hour. That has not changed uh, even uh, five weeks into this. So um, we're all probably watching the news to some degree. There are some areas of the country that are hit extremely hard. Obviously, New York City, uh, New Jersey, California, uh, they say Detroit, New Orleans, Chicago will be next. Um, there's areas that are hardly affected. Um, that makes it very tough on governments to decide the big decision of the day, which is do we continue to uh, stay at home or do we go back to work? And it's a different answer depending on which part of the country you're in, and both make sense. Um, um, every day that goes by, you're probably seeing this. This is all new to us. No one's ever done this. Stay at home with a lot of people that you regularly don't stay at home with these lengths of time. Um, on top of the fact that for many people, business is um, different finances have changed. So you're probably starting to see um, different stress levels, different uh, levels of emotions and different levels of irritation. Um, I don't think any of us, um, we all, we all deal with, we're in a, we're in a state of just constant uncertainty. We've been that way for two to five weeks. And that we're not wired that way. We're, we're all, we all want to know what's happening next. We want to know what's happening in our day, our week. So again, I think this different people have different abilities to deal with constant uncertainty. Some of us are very good at it. It's not an issue at all. Some people, it's very difficult. And I think that's where you're going to start seeing different levels of just anxiety and irritation. Just be calm with it. Again, we have to be tolerant with, tolerant with people, gentle with people in these days. Uh, again, it might not be your reality, but whatever they're feeling, it is their reality. They're right and you're right, both at the same time. So we just need to be aware that people have different capacities for dealing with this continuous uncertainty and just try to be calm and be patient with people. Um, I don't know if you saw Gene, uh, Gene Rawls's video we sent out yesterday. Um, she's doing it every Monday and Thursday ballpark. Uh, very, very good. Um, she mentioned uh, Cindy Young, who's an agent in the Rawls Group. She had talked to Cindy, uh, really brilliant idea on Cindy's part. So we've all done vision boards. Cindy actually did a vision board, a brand new one just for the COVID-19 situation. So what does my life look like 
under these new circumstances. And I think that's a brilliant idea. Part of this is just coming to reality, coming to grips, just believing that this is a real thing and how you're going to deal with it. So no different than all the things we hear about states of denial. Uh, all of us have been denying it in some, in some way, some shape or manner. Now I think we all believe there's a piece of this that affects us and we need to be real with it, quit denying it. So Cindy actually created a vision board, which is probably a lot of new activities that weren't on her original uh, vision board January 1st. And I think that's a great, great way to deal with it, especially if you have kids. I think they would love the, the exercise of doing a vision board for this, but they're, they're actually buying into the fact that things are different and this is what I'm doing. It's not a mystery. This is what I'm doing for, we don't know, the next two weeks to two months. We don't know, but at least they're going to have a vision of that and they can see it every day. I think that's a brilliant move just to make our daily routine, which has been disrupted, um, now more certain in our mind, and that should cause calm. Um, we all have been affected by this in some manner now. Um, it, it's changed something. Uh, we've all had something that we used to do that we can't do. We've all been screwed over in some way of things we like to do uh, two months ago that we no longer are able to do right now. I think a real key to this is just focus on what you can do what's good in your life. Actually, there's some things that this has caused that are actually made your life better because you're doing activities that you weren't doing two months ago that you're probably realizing these are pretty good activities. But I think we have to, we, we got to quit crying and quit moaning and quit grumbling about the things we can't do. There's no doubt. Everyone's had something. There's people I know, I've had three weddings in this five week period that didn't happen. It was just basically six people at the wedding, their family, funeral, same thing, high school seniors, total raw deal. You're not getting your prom. You're not getting your spring of your senior year, baseball, all those people. We, we can't focus on that. We need to focus on the things that we can do and that are working. It will be really helpful. Um, Again, the big divide here. Some of us are more worried about health and the health situation out there. Some are more worried about finances and business. Again, both of you are right. It's just the way you're wired. It's the way you've been brought up. It's what's in your life that's going to make a, um, a difference in which way you view that. But both are right and be tolerant uh, of the other side. Um, I've, I've seen some polls out there that um, actually just, I think this morning, uh, it sounds like still 69% of Americans uh, feel like that we should continue doing this for the next two weeks. I'm not saying that's my opinion. It, it might be, it might not, but 69% say we should continue at least for uh, two more weeks. Um, you got my email earlier, uh, or yesterday, actually, um, 18 contracts in the day. Um, that's pretty big. Um, that's pretty normal spring volume for our office. Um, so kudos to you that are still going out and getting it, finding a way to get it done. There are ways to get it done. We're still a, an essential business, still legal to do, and uh, proud of you for doing it. For you that Again, feel like it's a safety issue, don't do it. But we are doing a fair amount of business um, and that's pretty, pretty good. Um, it's very good actually. So again, uh, two or three weeks back, I called some people, some with our company, some not to uh, get their opinion on what they were seeing out there in the market. Um, I've called some more over the weekend. So I'm going to read you four of those just to give you, these are just four people's opinion, but uh, what they're seeing in the market out there. So um, the first one is 
So that, that was my question to him. What, uh, what are you seeing out there? I choose to think we are going to pull through this. We are all affected. Like him or, like him or not, Trump made his money in real estate and he had brought us back to a strong economy, hoping they do everything possible to keep us and the economy going. Thankfully, having a shortage of real estate now should be favorable for us moving forward. I think we'll see an influx of listings and a surge of activity. Don't have my head in the sand though. Some of those people who have lost their jobs or been furloughed will have to sell. Um, here's a short one. I'm saying same as I said before, mid July, we, we will be back slammed and stuff is still moving. I lost two deals this week in Grant Park, 400,000 price range, multiple offers. Third one, lots and lots of folks on the sidelines waiting to come out. They are waiting to come out to show property and to list property. Kind of like how folks are waiting to go to restaurants and salons. It will be slow at first and then bang, we will have had showings almost every day. We are busy, but we would have been absolutely slammed had this not happened. We are wearing gloves and masks at showings and being asked to do as well and being asked to do as well. Everything is taking a lot longer to do because of old statutes and such. Uh, I am busy with new listings, but my hands are tied with interior shots on some of them. Very frustrating actually, but I have a lot of confidence about the coming market and I'm being very positive with all my clients and encouraging. Last one, it's definitely slower, but I had three listing appointments this week virt virtually. Building pipeline, huge, but current market tough. So there you have it. You got people on both sides. Um, on one side, 18 contracts in today, stuff is happening. You got people that have various opinions on the market. Um, you got to play it the best you can. But I think what you're seeing is we can all keep uh, touching our database, building our pipeline. Uh, one person said, I agree with them. Come out of this. You could have a pipeline of who knows, 20 or 25 buyers and 20 or 25 listings ready to go the minute this uh, clears. So um, good to get a lot of people's opinions on this. Um, I'm going to show you a couple pictures just because most of you, I mean, we got four or five people in here today. Kevin's here, Marty's here, Dominique's here, um, Huffam's here. Um, you got the picture up, Pete? Okay, so one, this is a picture across the way, probably the last time you were here um, over towards SunTrust. So uh, looking back to the West, you know, they're building a hotel there. Uh, you're seeing the picture. So you're actually, that uh, all that property in the last month has been graded and you're actually starting to see uh, some, some walls going up there. Um, if you look uh, right kind of in the center between those trees. Um, also this other pick, is out the back outside our training room. Um, uh, most of you are aware we're built, they're building the complex. JLL is building a pavilion here at the terraces. Uh, it's going to be kind of at an angle. If you've ever been to Chastain park, kind of the way that uh, stage is set, but it's going to hold 20 tables. Uh, it will allow you to eat lunch there, meet with clients there. It's going to be pretty cool. So, Stuff is still going on out there. And I uh, just wanted to show you those pictures. All right, we are going to um, break first to Randy Lip. Um, key piece of what we do and, uh, and just getting a, a vibe for what's happening out there is the volume of uh, a mortgage uh, lender like Randy. So Randy, what do you got for us? Hey, Brad, thanks uh, for calling on me. Um, actually, Deb and I listened to Andy Stanley Easter morning, too. It was really good. Enjoyed that. Um, the market right now uh, is calming down from our perspective, much better than it was a couple of weeks ago. It's no longer like watching popcorn. Uh, rates have remained fairly calm and fairly steady. The purchase uh, is still around three and a quarter, refinance around three and three eighths. This is largely due to the government's involvement 
buying massive amounts of mortgage-backed securities. They're basically the only investor in that market right now. So uh, it's great for all of us that that has happened because that's the only thing that's allowing us to continue, providing liquidity in the market right now. So the part of the market, the segment of the market that's uh, been hurt the most at this particular point, the jumbo market, very, very difficult. Uh, out of 15 investors that we had doing jumbo loans, we have one still left in that market. And uh, the rates are not that attractive at this point. The uh, lesser qualified individuals, are still struggling. The guideline overlays that we were getting on a daily basis have slowed down. I think they finally figured out uh, exactly the type of buyer that we need. They haven't started relaxing yet, but they haven't started getting worse. So we're, we're pleased about that. The bond programs like Georgia Dream and We Decab and things like that are still tight you still have to have a, a higher credit score than you normally would have. So those are still difficult. What we're finding is a nice spot in the market, maybe um, doesn't necessarily have to do with uh, the agents out there that are working purchases, but maybe a nice touch to some of their database. Refinances are very strong right now. And a lot of people are actually using this as their own little stimulus plan. If the refinance is structured correctly, if they have equity and they have good credit, not only can they get a couple of thousand dollars back at closing, they can also skip two months payments, plus they can get a refund of their escrow balance currently. This in effect for some of these borrowers with 250 dollars to $350,000 loans, this means an extra $10,000 cash infused into their pocket which is a huge thing and much, uh, much bigger than the stimulus check they're likely to get. Of course, we are doing job verifications the day of closing. That hasn't changed. And we do ask that self-employed borrowers uh, submit letters explaining why their business has not been dramatically infected by the COVID-19. But overall, business as usual, we're still closing purchase loans 30 days or less. We're seeing a lot of appraisal waivers. Everything can be done virtually from our end. From the application, the borrower can upload their paperwork securely to the website. Uh, even the appraisal can be done desktop, although I don't recommend that. I think a full appraisal is still a better idea and closing with the help of Gannick and the other attorneys that are doing virtual closings, we can close virtually. So uh, that's it, back to you. All right, so rates three or 3%? Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter, all good. So I agree with you, Randy, this is a good angle for people. Um, again, at the core, as agents, we're always trying to make our clients money, save them money in real estate, make their home more efficient. Well, here's a way to put some money in their pocket, which has become a force, the fourth uh, thing we can do for them, which is very important right now. Um, I think, in my opinion, the key right now, the game everyone is worried about more than anything in their own personal life and in their business is debt level and liquidity. And we're all trying to figure out how to make money go further to last through this where we come out and we start making normal money again. So uh, anyway, um, if you don't understand, call Randy about this, but if you could call up your clients and go, um, you know, Ken, I don't know your situation, but I have a pretty good way. You can probably put $10,000 uh, in your pocket, which would tie people over for, depending on who you are for a month to three months. Um, I think they're going to listen to you and they'll be pretty excited that you've uh, been the person to make them aware of this. So call Randy if you don't understand how to do this. Again, also call Randy. Um, I had one of our agents um, text me the mo this morning, say, hey, did you see this? Which was all of us are reading articles all over the place. It was an article written over the weekend 
saying that J.P. Morgan, um, you know, basically, um, you know, their their uh, qualifications are f uh, like just going through the roof. Like you have to put down twenty percent. Um, the credit score is way high to even get a loan. And this agent was asking me, saying, "Hey, did you see this?" Well, my response was, "Yes, I saw it, but it's not." it's not the only game out there. And I called Randy immediately and said, Randy, I'm just confirming nothing's changed with y'all. And he said, correct. So again, here's a major reason to be using certainty right now. The credit score they can go with is way lower. Down payment, Randy just said, I just locked a 3% down loan, okay? And the big key is they're still doing things in 30 days where a lot of these big box people are gone to 60 to 90. And that's a key, key point. Remember that on your listings. Anything comes in, you have to, I would almost ask for written proof from the lender that they can truly close this in 30 days. Or you ought to say, guys, I'm not trying to, it's in the power play. I'm just, we want everyone involved wants to get this closed. Um, Randy, Matt, Paul at, certainty can do this in 30 days. They really can. And I know your people can. So think about all these matters, but a lot of good tips from Randy today. Um, Want to go through quickly the top producers in the office for the month, month of March. So uh, even with all going out there, we had some pretty big numbers um, going on last month as far as closings. So uh, we're going to start uh, with individuals. We always do one to 15. Again, top producers in our office for the month, month of March. Number one, congratulations to her. So proud, so proud of her. She's been four or five years in the business, coming on every year. Number one, actually by a long shot, Denise McEnany. Here's another person, just two or three years in the business. Awesome. Paige Pace, Virginia Moran. She is from the beginning, says she is going for it during this time. It's number three, uh, love seeing this. She was a star, had to raise some kids. She's back. Number four, Jen Burns. Number five, Amisha Mason. Six, again, not that long in the business, becoming a superstar, Jenny Posner. Seven, MJ Thomas. Eight, Becky Veal. Nine, Debbie Crawford. Ten, Katie Nelson. Unbelievable. 11, Steady Mike Culver. Here's a guy less than two years in the business. Tony Toich, way to go, man. Number 12, Manana Kane, 13. Osei Anam, 14. Susan Eschback, 15. Congratulations to all of you. Top teams, pretty much, uh, well, we got, we got some tougher competition this year, but uh, our usual number one is number one. RJ and Jim McCarty. Uh, congratulations. Uh, tight battle this year. It will be all year. Number two, Cynthia Pierce team. Three, Tara and Gary Gaines. Four, Kevin Probst and Faith Brown. Five, Devin Michael Martino. Congratulations. Groups, three or more licensed agents working together. Number one, Ming Joe Group. Number two, Nicole Ambrose Group. Three, Becky Wynn Evans Group. Four, Providence Group. Five, Alexander Group. Congratulations. Top commercial agents. Boy, when she does a deal, she does a big one. Number one, Josephine Chang. Number two, Rocky Kaufman. Three, Jeff Marshall. Four, Scott Mortower. And five, Joe Cannon. Congratulations to everybody. Uh, we will post this in email form to you. All right, let's go now. So you've heard from Stacy about Bold Pivot, which is um, a gift to the company from International. It's an incredible rate on this. It's coming up, and we're very fortunate in that James Farron is teaching this. James did uh, bold for us two back. He's local. Uh, James is a super talent, as is his wife, Rachel. Um, so, James, why don't you tell us two or three minutes what uh, is coming up with your Bold Pivot, when, and how do they do it? Brad, I appreciate you, brother, and I appreciate your leadership uh, for all the agents in Dunwoody based on the times that we're experiencing, because there are a lot of people just living in fear right now. There are a lot of people scared about not just their health, their finances. It's, okay, what is that future going to hold? And I think it was really uh, poignant 
that you mentioned earlier, thinking through at the end of this, who do we choose to be? Think about, okay, it's, eventually this will all pass. The question is, what are we doing right now to put ourselves in a position where we feel proud of the work that we put in when times were tough? And my friends, that's what Bold is built to do. Bold uh, Pivot was designed for the market of the moment. None of you have experienced Bold Pivot before. This is business objective, life by design, built for what we're facing in the market today. And a lot of people have been saying, James, what, you know, is this new? Are you using the same scripts? Tell you what, it would make absolutely no sense for you to go be calling around people saying, hey, listen, I'm in a competition. Who do you know? Look at it like that is not a script that would resonate with buyers and sellers right now. However, we have crafted new scripts that have shown a proven level of success. We have talked about ways to be sure that you keep your mindset in a positive state. My friends, that's where it all starts. You have an option right now to be a light in the darkness. There's a lot of bad things going on right now, and yet you have a choice as to what your messaging is going to be. You have a choice to be the local economist of choice for the people in your world to really share what is actually happening in the market, not what the news is saying, not what uh, you know Susie Joe's brother sister said, what is actually happening in the market because there are still people who need to buy, sell, invest in real estate. Bold Pivot is the pathway to get you where you want to be on the back end. Now, uh, Stacy, if you could go ahead and pop up that uh, screen for me. Uh, we have a breakdown of what Bold Pivot is going to look like. It starts on May 5th. Now, it's a national live stream where we're all going to be uh, going through this experience at the same time. Tuesdays and Thursdays are when this class happens. It's 2 to 4 Eastern, 2 to 4 Eastern on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, the days in between on Wednesdays and Fridays, you're actually going to have an opportunity to dive in with a coach Go through the scripts, go over some objection handlers that you learned the day before and bold so that you really gain mastery over this topic. So write your questions down on those Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they will be answered on the Wednesday and Thursday uh, coaches corner. Now, if you can't make it on those days, these calls will be recorded and you have up to 48 hours to view any session that you missed uh, the day before. We want to be sure that you get this content. And Gary Keller has taken a stand where he said, listen, this isn't going to be $7.99, the standard uh, freight for bold. It is $99 to gain access to this incredible information. So my hope is that you are all signing up. My expectation is that you are taking a stand for yourself in these hard business times so that you come out on the other side a stronger and uh, just more profitable agent. Brad, would love to know, do you have any questions for me? I don't think so, James. I and mean, we, we know your skills. We just had you two back. Yes, sir. Um, 99 bucks. That's, uh, that's quite amazing. I mean, this is an $800 course. Um, so seven eighths off the price uh, for you mathematicians, that's probably 87.5% uh, off the price. Um, I know we're all um, trying to watch our dollars, but I would say this is a no brainer. Um, in that uh, you're getting it for only $99 and you have coaching involved too. Yeah, I'd agree. It's now's the time to make the smart investment, not any investment. I think Bold Pivot is the smart investment for you. James, thanks for coming on. We'll uh, we'll get you again before May 5th for sure. All right, brother. Appreciate you. All right, you take care now. You too. All right. So, um, Good article in the uh, Atlanta Business Chronicle, uh, the most recent one, front page about Atlanta, uh, fourth fastest growing city in America between 2010-2019. Um, what do you think the other three are? Two in Texas, Dallas and Houston. Phoenix is number three. We're number four. Uh, we actually grew in those 10 years by 730,000 people. So um, that's why I am high on Atlanta. I've been high on Atlanta for 30 years. I've invested in Atlanta. I will continue to invest in Atlanta. Um, obviously, we have a situation here 
it will pass, but we just have too many factors here that are not going to change between top millennials live here, top tech is coming here, best airport in the world, we're a travel hub, 80% of America you can reach from Atlanta by a two hour flight. Um, we got an incredible access of highways intersecting here with 2085 and 75. Distribution, in my opinion, is the key to the next 10 years. Uh, we're already no one day deliveries, the, the gig, and you got to have product on the ground to be able to do that. So um, when we come out of this, Atlanta is still positioned incredibly well um, uh, compared to the country. And this is not surprising news that we're actually fourth for these 10 years. So um, I'll get you that article. That might be something you want to share with your database. All right, let's bring on, uh, never met him before. This is uh, Hugh Williams. So Hank Williams' son, um, he's got to be a solid guy. I mean, Hank, there's no better than Hank. So uh, uh, Hugh, the reason we have him on is he is with DF, DS Murphy, who uh, big, probably the biggest appraiser in town. But we want to hear from you, Hugh, in a couple of minutes uh, we've heard mortgage side. We've heard uh, attorney side. We last week talked to inspector. How, how is the appraisal world going? Uh, Y'all still able to do appraisals? What's your time frames? Give us a, a brief update there, Hugh. Um, we've been pretty much business as usual. Um, we've definitely seen a shift in, um, you know, purchase the refi jobs. We're doing a lot more refinancing work than purchases these days. Um, and, you know, depending lender to lender, some have relaxed a little bit on whether we can do exterior only or desktop appraisals. Um, we're still trying to go in the house if at all possible. Um, if the homeowner or tenant, whoever's in there is comfortable with it. Um, just cause we feel it's a better product if we can go in and actually see the house. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've been full steam ahead. Um, turn times have been pretty pretty normal for us. Um, I just think I don't know if Randy could probably tell you that they're they're pretty backed up. The lenders are, um, so we're seeing the same turn times with our jobs. Okay, so are y'all still actually physically going in houses and and appraising? Uh, yeah, yeah. I went to two today. I have a couple tomorrow. We're still still doing it. Um, we just asked that the homeowners flip on all the lights, open all the interior doors. Um, and you know, I have a mask, gloves, booties on, um, and just try and get in there in and out as quickly as possible. Has anyone refused coming in? Yeah. And, um, we had to work with our, our lender, our client, um, to do an exterior only. Um, it was a house where, you know, the woman had lupus. So obviously she's at a higher risk for getting the virus. So we were able to work around it. Um, and Fannie Mae sent out guidelines, I think two weeks ago, talking about the relaxed, you know, relaxed um, rules for if they require an interior inspection. So some houses are good for it. Some are not. Okay. So okay. Still business as usual and you're, you're still doing a fair number of uh, a fair volume of appraisals. Yes, sir. Great to hear, Hugh. Um, any any tips for us? I mean, oh, here's a good question. So, is are y'all taking at this point? Is there a COVID nineteen factor in appraisals, or is it still pretty much straight up with comps? Um, so we're starting to see a little bit. You know, we rely on our past data mostly for our for our analysis. So we've got about a month of you know, real coronavirus impact that we're starting to see creep into our appraisals. Um, it's definitely showing itself more on the higher end of the market. Um, the lower end is still, still churning and burning. I agree. I mean, there's still multiple offers in a lot of places, man. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being on and um, thanks for all you're doing. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right, Hugh. So uh, let's go through a list of uh, things to know. Um, some of these we've touched on, don't want you to forget some new. Um, 
One thing that's interesting that you probably didn't even notice today, uh, many times you, you don't see a realtor on April 15th. You would not see one realtor. Um, as you know, we, we are somewhat of procrastinators and uh, in most years, uh, most people would be scrambling to put their taxes in uh, that outside mailbox by 11.59 tonight. Not happening this year. Just remember, you don't have to do that. Uh, it has been extended, uh, the tax deadline, to July 15th. Um, I'm sure uh, most of you know that. I, I, I'm going to guess it'll be extended again, but um, good, good to know no one's scrambling today. Um, realize with Randy and them, we're not seeing this, but many lenders are requiring bigger down payments, higher credit scores, um, longer closings, longer closing timeframes. It is very important when it's your listing or you have a buyer that just has to use somebody like this, we got to ask a lot of questions because it's going to mess up a lot of things. Any of these um, can mess up a lot of uh, situations, especially if it's your listing and they're dealing with someone like this and just their, the qualifications are so steep, it's just not going to happen. So ask a lot of questions. Again, I would almost be running everything by Randy. I think they're going to be an incredible resource uh, in the upcoming months. Uh, remember what Randy said, jumbo loans are the tough one right now. Um, I think he said 15 out of 16 of the normal jumbo lenders are not even lending. Um, that uh, That's what we're trying to avoid. That's what the government putting all the money in did three weeks to a month ago. Liquidity has to remain when you have people that don't even want these loans, we have a real problem. So their thinking is we're just worried about higher priced homes in their future. So uh, they would much rather take five $200,000 loans as opposed to $1 million loan, just risk wise. So just be aware of that. It's important to know. Um, again, every week, use your COVID-19 special steps. Um, we need those in there. If things get delayed, prolonged, everyone's covered. We're not getting into legal situations. Um, talk to Steve um, Thomas today. He's an expert. They've been doing it for decades, him and his dad, uh, 1031 exchanges. Just good to know they've also, the government has also extended those dates. So if you had someone that was in the game that had already sold a property, remember 1031, you can flip into like kind property uh, without um, paying taxes on it. Uh, but you have to do things within a certain number of days. So the 45 day designation period, um, and then you have 180 day um, complete exchange period. Well, what they've done now is any, if either one of those two timeframes was falling between April 11th, just a few days ago, and July 14th, they've extended those to July 15th. So giving you more time, uh, the real key is probably on the, the designation period. So just be aware of that. Um, you know, not everyone is dealing with 1031 exchanges. It's um, it's not the norm, but plenty of people do. They have investors, so be aware of that. Um, tell you what, I don't know what's going on, but uh, it seems like five times over the weekend, I had somebody say, go get a Popeye's fried chicken sandwich. Um, they say it's as good as Chick-fil-A, which I find hard to believe. My favorite food on the planet, Chick-fil-A number one with waffle fries and Diet Coke. But uh, I've heard it too many times. Apparently, uh, you need to go to Popeye's and get you uh, uh, a chicken, a fried chicken sandwich. It's incredible. Uh, try one. Maybe it's that good. Be a good touch for your database. Um, oh, I forgot this. I actually did something I've done a long time this weekend. I actually made a wish on a shooting star. Pretty cool. I hadn't done that in a long time. Um, also, um, this is a key one. We said this last week. Don't know what situation you're in financially, but if you are choosing not to make your mortgage payment, remember 
You, you have to find a way to make sure your homeowner's insurance is getting paid. That's a big, big disaster. If you quit paying, your homeowners is not in play. Your house burns down. Now you got a major, major problem. So just remember that you got to have your homeowner's insurance paid. All right, let's break uh, to Renee Dillon over at Gannick. Um, if I had to guess, she's probably wearing flowered slacks and you know, probably 12 inches too short, um, um, like uh, 12 inches above her ankle. That would probably be a pretty good wager. So, Renee, um, tell us about the closing world. Are you having much fallout or things happening? What are the biggest issues? Uh, we really aren't having a lot of fallout. We we That's are. Here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we really aren't having a lot of fallout. Um, just the same type of things we normally see, where you know somebody's canceling during due diligence and then going under contract on a different property. Um, it is a little bit slower than it would usually be at this time of the year, but it's still. We're still getting a bunch of contracts in. I think I saw four come in this morning just to me, which is which is unusual because I don't usually get the contracts sent to me directly. Um, so so y'all are still out there busy and working, which is which is awesome. Um, I want to second what Brad said about using the COVID nineteen steps in the contract. Make sure you're using them every time. Um, I know a lot of the brokerages in town have sent out variations on the one that Gar released. We actually have a variation on our own website that's a little bit more seller friendly and carves out an exception for um, the fact that a financial reason is not going to be a COVID related event. So just keep an eye on the ones on the contracts that you're getting in, what the steps say, you may, you may want to change them to be more advantageous to your client, depending on if you're representing the buyer or the seller. Um, and let's see what else. So the governor extended video conference closings to May 13th. So we'll, that's going to continue to be an option for the next month. We're finding a lot of people actually don't want to do them. They want to either come in or just sign in the car. They feel more comfortable than having to deal with all the paperwork themselves. So, you know, we've just been saying every single closing is a little bit different right now, depending on, you know, what the buyer situation is and what the seller situation is. So just, you know, work with our office and we'll, we'll, we'll do basically whatever is easiest for, for your client to close. Fantastic. So uh, I am highly impressed just with you and your firm and the whole mortgage or the whole closing industry. It seemed like a couple of weeks ago we were going to be just totally, you know, out of business, not being able to close the stuff. And they've, they found ways where, I mean, it's not an issue at all. And that's fantastic. So um, thanks for all y'all are doing over there and stay safe. Thank you, you too. All right, so um, crazy times, changing times. Um, who moved my cheese? It's it's um, never seen anything like it, but there are some bright sides to this. There are silver linings in all of this. Um, you probably saw, I mean, uh, pollution is like a zillion times better. Um, there's reports that there's cities that have mountains nearby that pollution is so bad around the world. They hadn't, they hadn't seen the mountains in years. Now they got a great view of the mountains. There's no pollution. Um, that's a plus. Um, you're not putting miles on your car. Not as many. Um, that's a plus. Um, I think everyone is kind of enjoying checking in on friends and having friends check in on you. Uh, we maybe got a little too busy over the last decade and um, I'm enjoying that. I got to say, and I'm thinking most people are. Um, I think a big one is most of us have probably had time just to really start taking inventory of what really matters in our life. And um, I think that'll be a big plus coming out of this. Um, you probably realize some things that you, quit doing or forgot to do that uh, this time allows to do. And hopefully those stay with us. So there are some bright sides to this situation. Um, let's 
move over to Stacy. Stacy, um, thanks for all you're doing, um, kind of around the clock, answering <laughs> questions, working on training. But uh, tell us about Ignite coming up. Tell us about the training for the week coming up. All righty. We have, um, gosh, we're doing uh, launching our first Rawls Group virtual Ignite class. It'll be through Zoom. Uh, five of the market centers are participating and we have orientation this Wednesday and then it starts next Monday. Um, so very exciting new. Uh, we're, we're mostly focused on um, agents needing post license credit first. After we really get our sea legs, then we may um, open it up to do a follow up for just agents in general, because really convenient um, to do it from home. So I want to share with you uh, the lineup of um, online classes for this week, the Connect Live schedule, and it's pretty much focused on the old, the, the pivot concept, but the, so one o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, some of them are just 30 minutes. Um, ooh, I love this one on Thursday at 11. Build your virtual value proposition. Ooh, that could be some meaty. I really like that one. Um, I also want to share some additional resources uh, for you. Two trainers that I value highly and I subscribe to their YouTube channels. Nick Baldwin um, is one. And he has got, oh my goodness. So, and, and he, one of the things I love is that he shares everything he does. He um, records and posts here on his YouTube channel. Um, it's just Nick Baldwin. Uh, he's got virtual open house. Um, oh, so many good resources. And then uh, another one is Jay Cermak. He is a um, labs trainer. He's down in Florida. Really nice guy. He also is one that just has a sharing, giving heart. And I met him at family reunion. Um, so, ooh, so Jay Cermak is his name. And you can text me if you don't remember uh, these. Uh, lastly, I'm taking you to Marty Miller. He's my third um, teacher that I subscribe to and follow. He is the one that has the 33 uh, command 66 day challenge 3.0. Um, and I click here on the view full playlist and then I can day one, two, three, four, five. So there you go. Um, resources there just, you can learn, learn, learn. Um, and that's what I'm doing. Thank you, Brad. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks for all you're doing. So to kind of wrap up, um, this is the ultimate time for a number of things. One, build your database. Get it in command. Again, every week I've said you can have one-on-one -on -one help getting your database in command. We got seven staff members that can help you with that. It's a great time to touch your database. It's a great time to learn command. Um, it's a very good time to learn how to video conference. When we come out of this, that will be one thing that remains. We will be doing a lot more uh, video conferencing. Also, again, I have plenty of them. I've told you about Shift. Um, come get one of these, free to you. Um, an amazing book. This was written in um, more of the 2008, 2009 range when the real estate market, the world had a major shift way different than this one caused by um, mortgage impropriety uh, that really brought down uh, our industry uh, to, in some places, 90% less business in Florida, we were probably only down 20% in Atlanta, but you did have to change. You had to do things different um, to uh, make money in those times. 
Um, those were times we had massive supply. Now we're still in low supply, but this book is still very relevant how you, and we're all required to shift right now, our business, our lives, everything we do. So I would highly advise you get one of these and I would advise that you start out by flipping to the back first. And I told, I can't remember the ALC a couple of years back, I can't remember who it was, but I was shocked that I hadn't looked at this book in a long time, basically, because we've had eight years of incredible upcycle, uh, but also uh, totally forgot at the very end of the book is the gift of the shift. So it, it's 11 pages, but the truth is there's a gift to all changing times. There really is, if you can see it that way. I'm gonna read you a little bit of this. Uh, so this is Gary talking, but it's, I believe it's fair to say that no matter your circumstances, things can be easy or hard depending on you. You'll decide. You can either make easy times harder than they need to be, or you can make hard times as easy as they can be. You don't get to decide what the market will do, but you can definitely get to decide what you will do. Um, and another quote, even in tough times, there's much to savor. Uh, totally agree. Um, this is a real key right now. We're wasting time worrying about things we cannot affect. So I would advise you work on the things you can affect, which is you. And it's the people, you know, it's your family, it's your database. It's your friends. I cannot do anything. It does me no good to spend time worrying whether China didn't tell us the real truth early or what Trump's doing right or wrong. It, it, I can't affect that. I'm not going to drive to Washington and protest, which means I could, that would be a way to affect. I'm not going to do that. I have plenty to work on with me and the people I am around. So um, we can, just like that quote says, we hard times can be easy, easy times hard. It depends on you. I would highly advise you take a break from the news. Uh, I know how um, luring it is. Um, I would try to take even days off where you just trust it. Just, I'm gonna do other stuff. I, I'm gonna go a day without the news. Um, Provide hope and positive energy for people. If you really spent your day doing that, you would probably go, wow, th these times are pretty easy. Um, it feels really good to give people hope and provide positive information to them. When you can, be kind. Give kindness to people. You, that will help you also. Um, you got to reinvent yourself right now. You got to be a problem solver and make that a fun process. Um, I've told you before, because I've lived this, do not go, many of us are sleeping less than we normally do. Probably awake, trying to solve problems in your head, trying to see the future, make things that are uncertain, certain. You got to get some sleep. I, my advice is if you've gone two days without much sleep, go take a PM and sleep. You can't go without sleep forever. It's not good. Also, do not make quick decisions out of fear. If you're going to do something, think about it for a long time. Fear is not a good place to make decisions. And be tolerant of other people. Again, the longer we go in this, people are getting more impatient, more anxious. Everyone has an opinion and their opinion is right. Again, right now, huge divide. Some people, I'm not leaving my house for any reason. And I can't believe people out working and people that are out working because of various reasons. I want to support my family. I want to support the community are out. Both are right in their mind, what they're thinking, both are right. And they're doing it for good reasons. Be tolerant of people. Try to see other people's pain, other people's difficulty, 
and you'll understand why they're acting a certain way and it's right to them and you should accept that. Um, again, the key to all of this moving forward for yourself and everyone is your debt level and liquidity. Figure that out for yourself. We have to stay as liquid as possible um, to go another day, kick the can down the street another day, another week, another month, to the point when we come out of this. And last, I will say there is always opportunity in changing times, massive, massive opportunity in changing times. That's a positive thought. So try to stay positive. Try to be nice to people, kind to people, help people. It'll make your days better. But remember, we did 18 contracts today. There is business happening. There, It's out there if you're comfortable doing it. So um, all of us staff, all here to help you call. You can get one-on-ones. We love you guys. We want you to be safe. Uh, we want you to come through this in fine fashion. So um, enjoyed being with you today. Call any of us if you need help or just a text or a phone call away. All right. Y'all have a good one. See you now.